I'm interested in innovation. I think it's really exciting. And also we are at a time in humanity, really, that at a point of a bigger, the, probably the biggest crisis we've ever had as a, as, a, as a race with climate change. And I don't believe the planet, it's a problem with the planet. The planet will survive whatever we do to it. It's whether the human race survives, really, that's, that's critical. Well, I noticed you, you won a Nax Award last year and you also appeared on Sky News. Tell us, what, what was that all about? Well, our uh, purpose at Thornton's Budgets is we are the community supermarket that really cares about people and planet. So when David Attenborough, through Blue Planet 2, brought really the plastic problem to global living rooms, as opposed to being just something that environmentalists cared about, we felt that we, we needed to do something, that we could do something. And we thought, well, how can we produce zones around the store of plastic-free products for our customers? We launched in November 2018, we launched 1,800 plastic-free products uh, across 28 zones. Um, we did it for three reasons. One was we wanted to reduce the amount of plastic that we were contributing. Secondly, we wanted our customers to have the opportunity to shop plastic-free, which they now can do. But thirdly, most importantly, we wanted to show the big guys that it wasn't as difficult as they let it on to be. Now, that so, was a year ago. Yes. What was the impact on the big guys? Well, everybody's uh, been here yeah. from all around the world. Yeah. Uh, retailers predominantly, but manufacturers as well. Tesco have made some quite big moves on this. Um, in other markets, there are people making big moves on it. So I think it's something shifted in the, in the consciousness about this in the last 12 months. Given your conversations with a lot of other retailers and traveling around the world, is, is it this, this low recycling level, 9% or thereabouts, that's pretty typical, isn't it? It is, yes, yes. And th that means that a strategy of making all your packaging recyclable, which some retailers are doing, actually is a flawed strategy. But my complexity point is, this, this is glass, okay? So in theory, that's better. But then there's a carbon footprint point of view of carrying glass around, which is heavier. Um, so it it's all needs to be weighed up. Um, I part live in Germany. The Germans still have the returnable bottle scheme, which is one of the perfect solutions to the, the challenge of plastic and climate because, you know, if you continuously reuse a bottle, then it starts becoming much, much more sensible. Uh, but the, the fact is that most plastic doesn't ever go, it doesn't ever break down, uh, and to use it for something that's thrown away and only used once. I mean, the worst case scenario is a, is a, a sandwich and all these products here are, are in biodegradable products, or a coffee cup where you literally, the, you know, it's put, the coffee cup is the worst, it's put into the coffee cup, 15 minutes it's gone and you chuck it away and that plastic is, or the lid is sitting around for forever. What have you noticed about this store as far as plastic is concerned? Uh, that there's a whole lot less and um, I mean I've, I've been trying to use less for a long time anyway so I really noticed when it started happening here. You know, I look at, at how things are wrapped and I try not to buy the plastic wrap. I agree. Why shops have been using plastic for so long, I really don't understand. And it's not really the customer or the public. This is what's been given without any option to the public. So it, it, I always find it strange to think that the people who have been enforcing this on the public and now uh, wondering about what they've been doing to the public. The week we launched the Plastic Free Zones, our sales were up 6%. The following week the same, then it settled down at 4%. For a whole year, we had 4% sales growth. Now, in this market, in any market in retail, 4% is a lot of sales. And that was because customers said, we love what you're doing, we want to shop, we want solutions. So, People know, thanks to, to one end of the age scale, David Attenborough, and the other end, Greta, what you see is that the, the general awareness of the population of plastic, but also the climate crisis, is such that people want to do something. But they want easy solutions. 
Just coming back to something you said, you said it's not about uh, creating more easily recycling, recyclable mm -hmm. packaging, it's mm -hmm. about cutting down on the use of plastic. What do you mean by that? Well, the thing about the recycling is we know the recycling system is broken. Um, there are, there are, there's a, an Australian organisation called the Mindu Project that is proposing that all plastic, virgin plastic manufacturers increase the price of plastic so that recycling becomes viable. The reason it's not working is that the virgin plastic is too cheap. So therefore, there's not the incentive to use recycled products. This is all about money, Dan, ultimately. And this is one of the issues that we face, the traditional way of running businesses, which is all about the money. That's forcing people. So the reason that the return of a bottle scheme was disbanded was because plastic was cheaper. Um, so that's a big challenge. So just, you know, recycling can work if the infrastructure is in place and the economics work, but it's not working right now. But is the only, uh, is it really down to re the regulators, the legislators to, to create that, you know, that, that, to reframe the market, you know, in, in, in that, that's something that retailers or suppliers can't really do, well, is it? I think if we sat and waited for the current batch of politicians that are our leaders, at both, both sides of the Atlantic, I think, we'll, you know, we'll be, you know, we'll be curtains. So as businesses within the framework we have, so we've examined, we've shown what we could do here. It's not perfect. In our zero packaging section, we now have the facility for people to bring their own containers back and fill them. Now, that is the perfect solution. So plastic, in its own right, is not necessarily bad. It's just, if it's reused, you know, ongoing, continuously reused, then that's not so much of a problem. It's the sort of use it once, chuck it away. That's what we need to move away from. I like certain waters, and um, it's quite difficult to get those in glass bottles that are not horribly expensive and that yep. feels so that that would be something I'd say um, could be improved on. It's probably a bit before my time but it looks as if this particular shop is doing what happened earlier on uh, last century which is put things in paper. This whole climate crisis is the biggest challenge we've ever faced. It's the biggest challenge that businesses face. And you have a couple of choices. You either embrace it and you see, actually, this can be commercially quite good, as well as the right thing to do, or you stick your head in the stand and you become another Kodak. So those are the, the choices. So there's a big issue in, for retailers and suppliers in, in, every, in every country around yes. the world. It's a global yes. issue. It is, absolutely. Um, and it's in, across all industries, across all sectors. It's not just in food. It's the whole, we need to rethink every, every aspect of how we do business to reduce the, the, the carbon that we pump into the world. If you went to an audience of business leaders and you said to them, so who here is dealing with the climate crisis? Every hand would go up. Um, if you asked them to score how they're doing on one, out of one to 10, if they were really honest, the numbers would be quite, you know, sort of, Low. From a personal point of view, you've done the right thing yes. for your customers, you've done the right thing for your planet, and it's actually worked financially yes. for you as well. Yes. It's That's a perfect scenario, that, isn't it? That is the, were, you the, the, were you expecting that, Andrew? You'd probably done it even <coughs> if it hadn't worked for you, wouldn't, wouldn't you? Um, possibly, yes. But the question is, you can't sustainably keep doing things and investing in things that don't give you return, because ultimately you go bust. So it had to make money. It has to make money. And I don't think, you know, some people sort of say, you know, the environment movement talk about profit being a dirty word. It's not. Without profit, we can't continue. So we wouldn't be, you know, if everything we had done over the last 13 years here hadn't made commercial sense, we wouldn't be here to continue to do things. So it has to make sense. When you look at um, sustainability more broadly, what makes you angry? I think greenwash. Um, the, the sort of the, the people pretending they're doing things, the glossy reports, the, the oh yeah, isn't this amazing? We're doing all this and posters about recycling and circular economies and so on and so forth. When actually they're really not. Is there so much, much difference? Do you think there's done? much difference between governments that greenwash and governments that that, that don't bother? Oh, they, you you'd lump them all together, would you? You know, in, in the commercial world, I can think of some companies that are doing better things than not. In country-wise, I can't think of any country where it could be said that, they, that they're really on it on the whole climate crisis.
Do you find it, young people's approach to the planet quite inspiring in, in, in a way, in that um, they perhaps can see the, the world as a whole and we just think about our little part of it, you know, and, uh, and, and, and if we're okay, we don't care about anybody else. Do you think young people have a different approach to, I think they to, do. to the world? Yes, I think they absolutely do. Uh, and I think that that's really refreshing. And I think <coughs> the one thing that will get business leaders to make a difference is their children or their grandchildren saying, you know, dad, grandpa, what, you know, Mum, what, what are you doing about this? So I think that's really, really powerful. And that's where Greta is so powerful, because she's influencing people. To, and, and young kids are asking more questions than we are. And they are less sort of, you know, nimby, you know, not in my backyard, me, just little, my own little world sort of thing. And they're, you know, they're, they're much more activist, aren't they, in yes. terms of what they're prepared yes. to do? Well, they are the one, you know, we won't, you know, we, by the time this gets really bad, we won't be around, Dan, you and I. We'll be kind of long gone. But it's our children and our children's children that are going to be the ones who have to pick up the consequences of this. I, I think really, you know, if you buy a lot of stuff, you can't just hold it in your hands and put it in your pocket. It's got to go somewhere. And it, it does seem logical to adopt what the shop is doing, which is to revert back to using paper bags.